This video is sponsored by OWC. It is new iPhone day, so happy iPhone day, everyone. In this video, we are going to take a quick look and get my brutally honest impressions of the brand new iPhone 13 lineup, specifically focusing on the Pro Max for this one. But before we get going, please let me know your thoughts on these phones, if you already have them in your hands and you've been using them, or just your impressions before getting one in the comments down below. And if you wanna see more coverage uh, from us in the future, we have iPad mini stuff coming up, more iPhone 13 tests. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see those videos. Lots of good stuff coming up in the next week. All right, so I picked up these iPhones just a few hours ago in the morning. So these are just really, really Really rough impressions. Shout out to Michael at the Apple store for making things such a smooth process. And speaking of smooth process, unboxing an iPhone 13 has never been easier. Apple keeps reducing the packages to save the environment, which is fine. So this time there's no more plastic wrap around the box, just a few pull tabs, and then you can pop open the box, your phone sits inside, there's some very small papers, a SIM ejection tool, and a lightning to USB-C cable. That is it across all phones. It doesn't matter which one you get, whether it's the Pro or the 13. The only difference being that the black boxes, again, are for the Pro models and the white are for the regular non-Pro phones. Now, the first impressions of the new device in hand is that I can definitely feel the weight difference. It just feels like a chonky boy, especially the Pro Max. And Starlight, which is this one right here, is pretty much white, and I really like the white iPhone. Uh, it's something that I wish the non-pro, or I mean the regular iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max had, uh, but you can't get that color. I suppose silver is good enough, but I really like this white or starlight. I also have the new blue. It's slightly less blue than before. That's about it. The other standout difference are these cameras and camera bumps. Good Lord, these things are massive. When I first took it out of the box, that was the first thing I noticed. My eyes gravitated towards these lenses. They are massive. The rest of the iPhone is kind of boring because, well, I said I'm gonna be brutally honest and I mean it, I am already bored with these new iPhones. It's been like two hours, I'm over it. There just isn't a whole lot of change to get people excited, or at least people like me who are upgrading every single year, or it's my job to test all of these phones. It is technically an S year after all, so it makes sense, but yeah, I'm a little bored. The notch is smaller. I didn't notice it by itself, but then putting it next to my iPhone 12 Pro Max, well, yeah, you can definitely tell that there's a difference. It's still kind of wasting space up there, but you know, there is a difference. Now, one change I'm actually pretty excited for, and one that's definitely noticeable, is the 120 hertz ProMotion display. I can already tell you I'm going to love this. It's buttery smooth, and it's a fantastic addition. It's just a few years late to the party, but hey, at least it's here. So let's enjoy it. Assuming you bought a 13 Pro or Pro Max, because if you have a regular 13 or a 13 mini, you're out of luck. Let's see, 13, iPhone 13, what else is different about this? Um, oh yeah, the cameras. How can I forget about these massive cameras? Uh, there's some new features, photographic styles being one of them. And when you first open up the camera app, you'll see a menu sort of option here where you just swipe through and pick the default style that you wanna go with for your new photographic styles. I went with Vibrant. Uh, there's an icon in the top right corner that allows you to turn it on or off. So here's a quick picture with the style on and style off. Go ahead and let me know what you think. They're the same picture. There's also a new macro photography mode for at least the Pro and the Pro Max models. This feature is definitely fun to mess around with, but it's not entirely practical in my opinion, or I just don't know what we're gonna use it for in a real life kind of use case, but it's there, so I'm not gonna hate on it. I've also noticed a weird quirk that's a bit frustrating. When you try to get close to a subject, your phone will automatically switch to the appropriate camera so that you can get into the macro mode, but if you get too close or you slightly cover the lens on accident, it will kind of get stuck or switch back to the other camera and everything's blurry and you aren't in a macro photography mode and you can't get it to go back without sort of stepping back and resetting the whole shot. And by that point, if you're trying to get a bug or something close up, you might've already missed it. So with that said, here are some shots. What do you think of these macro shots? On the video side, the entire 13 lineup did get a new cinematic video mode, which is basically portrait mode for video. And it's something that exists on other Android devices, mainly Samsung with its live focus video, and Apple finally implemented it on its iPhone. 
I tested it briefly. It works relatively well, but it's definitely not amazing. Again, this test was quick, but it makes mistakes. I will say I was pretty impressed with the rack or pull focus feature where I can focus on one item in the foreground and then switch focus to the background by a simple tap. And it worked pretty well most of the time. Now I'll be testing these cameras out more over the next few days and we'll have a dedicated video on them next week. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video either. So yeah, I mean, it's another iPhone that's painstakingly similar to the previous model. Last year was sort of the major upgrade version. This one, again, it's an S year, so it's slight improvements to a phone that was already really, really good. Now, there are, is some improvements to battery life. I haven't been able to tell you because I haven't had this phone for too long. Maybe I'll update you guys on Twitter, so go ahead and follow me there if you haven't already. Um, so I have no idea how good or bad the battery might be, but I'm expecting improvements. It's early, but like I said, I'm pretty bored with this year's update. To be fair to Apple, I was already pretty bored during and after the event when it came to the iPhone 13, so my opinions haven't really changed, and bored doesn't mean bad. It was already an incredible phone, now it just has a few minor tweaks and upgrades to make the phone even better. Of course, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below on everything that we just talked about. And before we end today's video, I do wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC just released a new ultra-fast Thunderbolt bus-powered portable SSD, the Envoy Pro SX. The OWC Envoy Pro SX is versatile enough to be used as a bus-powered drive for daily storage and backup tasks. It can handle workflows easily, handle the speed demands of production-level audio, design, and photography workflows and it serves up a real world performance speed up to 2,800 megabytes per second with modern Thunderbolt and USB 4 equipped Macs and PCs. This drive is extremely portable in a very small compact shell that's also rugged enough to be certified against dust, water, and drops. It features a removable Thunderbolt cable and is test certified to handle the nastiest environments. So from managing obstacles in the field to crushing deadlines at home, the OWC Envoy Pro SX lets you unleash your productivity power no matter the task. And for more information about the Envoy Pro SX and OWC in general, visit the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.